Shalom and a good day to you. I'm Richard Peretz, and our special show today is another in our continuing series on profiles of prominent community and business leaders. Our guest today is Bernie Marcus, the president of the Home Depot chain of stores with locations just about everywhere. He'll share his views on this great success story and other matters of interest following this. Caring for our nation's grandparents. What a great opportunity. What a great privilege that is for our staff at Grand Courts. At Grand Courts, it is our mission to provide dignity, respect, and a safe environment for our residents. At Grand Courts, we look forward to serving you and your loved ones. We invite you to come look for yourself. We have facilities across the United States. For more information, please give us a call. As you grow older, your body produces less and less melatonin, a natural sleep-inducing substance that's absolutely essential for a deep, restful sleep. Melatonin deficiency is the primary cause of insomnia, regardless of your age. Scientists who treat sleep disorders find that melatonin helps their patients sleep. Now, Life Extension Foundation has formulated Natural Sleep with Melatonin Plus. You'll enjoy your best night's sleep in years. Natural Sleep with Melatonin Plus from the Life Extension Foundation. So he can sleep, so you can sleep. For a good night's sleep, order your two-month supply of Natural Sleep for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-505-4480 or send payment to address on screen. For years, my doctor suggested I exercise, but I have arthritis and weak legs, and I'm not able to use most exercise equipment seen on TV. Then I saw the Execusizer, a lightweight portable exercise machine that I could use while sitting in my favorite chair as I watch TV, read, or knit. I can use it lying down, and it's great for exercising my upper body. I now have stronger legs and stomach muscles and arms with no flab. I'm losing weight and feeling great. There is no machine like it. Improve your health, sleep better, fight osteoporosis. The Execusizer gave me a second chance on life. Use the Execusizer. You'll improve your aerobic capacity, reduce cholesterol, and lower blood pressure. Order your Execusizer today. Three easy payments of $33 or send a check or money order for $99 plus shipping and handling to the address on the screen. Major credit cards accepted. Call 1-800-455-0806 now. With us now is Mr. Bernie Marcus, the Chairman and CEO of Home Depot. It's a pleasure to have you on the Shalom it's Show. Very good to be with you. Mr. Marcus, tell our viewers a little about your business and how it's expanded so incredibly over the years. Well, it's 16 years old. And today we have 340 stores. We'll do over $12 billion in sales, and I think that uh, in the retail business, that's probably the largest growth in the very shortest period of time that, that's ever happened in the United States. And uh, we're virtually um, throughout the United States. If you go around the circumference of the United States, north, south, east, and west, and we're just now coming into the Midwest. Uh, we open in Chicago and Detroit. And eventually, uh, Home Depot will be a national firm uh, from coast to coast, north, south, east, west. Large company, but still running very uh, tight operation. We're still entrepreneurial. Uh, we have uh, divisions that uh, literally are broken up and run their own businesses, so it's a smaller kind of an operation. And um, 
Generally, uh, I think that uh, when we move into a new market and we uh, open our stores, people are overwhelmed with what they see, the assortment, the prices, uh, the quality of the merchandise, and more importantly, uh, the quality of the people. They're really uh, unusual people that we have working in our stores. Bernie, I must tell you that I absolutely love your stores. In fact, you would like to have an apartment in one of them. I just move in because I'm totally stimulated by the opportunity of uh, getting into projects and building and things and so forth. But I'd like you to tell our viewers, please, uh, of the concept. How, how and who actually invented this, this great concept? Well, I, I think that the fact that you'd like to move in is great. And uh, uh, we'll make room for you if you'd like, as long as you bring money and buy merchandise. But the, uh, the concept really came out of a, uh, a very tragic situation, kind of tragic. Uh, uh, myself and Arthur Blank, who was president of the company, were fired back in 1978 from the job that we had at the Handy Dan Home Improvement Center in California. And frankly, what happened is that we just looked at uh, the business and we said, you know, uh, how about if we do it for ourselves? How about if we open our own business? And we looked, tried to think of what all the good things about our business were at that time and how it could be made better. And what we really did was live our life all over again. We took a concept that was working very well. We were making lots of money in the company we were in. We were fired by somebody who didn't like us too well, didn't like me at all. And uh, it was more of a corporate kind of a, a battle. Uh, but we were making very, very uh, good profits for that company and growing very well. And uh, we just looked at the business and we saw small stores that had uh, uh, merchandise that was cherry picked. In other words, they carried two hammers and three of this and five of this. And really, the assortment was very, very small. And if you wanted to do a house or a building or, or, or decorate a house, you really couldn't find what you needed in those stores. So we said, well, we have our lives to live over again. What are we going to do? Uh, let's build a store where the assortment is dynamic, where people could literally build a, a house out of the store. Let's give them a tremendous assortment of quality brand name merchandise. And uh, let's do something unique. Let's price it way below what the market was at that time. And we were leaders in the market, so we knew what the pricing was. And we did. We just knocked off about one-third of the price, literally one-third the price, because we believed we would do a, a very large volume. And then we said the last ingredient, let us hire quality people so that when you walked into a store and you needed to do something, that somebody could be there that would explain it to you, go through all the procedures, show you how to do it, how not to do it, what merchandise you needed, what materials you needed, what, what to watch out for. And we did it. We opened four stores in Atlanta, and they did not take off at first. It took about a year before they caught fire. And then they caught fire, and from that point on, uh, it's history. Uh, and the company has just grown dramatically, and uh, we've never stopped tinkering with it. So what you see today in a Home Depot store, uh, if you were to put it next to an, the old one, the one that we opened, you wouldn't recognize the store. And obviously, uh, in our belief, the, the stores that we're going to open two and three and four years from now are going to have the same difference. You just won't recognize them. So the company keeps trying. We keep tinkering with it. We keep fooling with it. And uh, uh, we are uh, number one in our business, in the world. And we intend to keep that place and intend to grow that way. Mr. Marcus, that's really most fascinating. But please tell our viewers where your company is now and what your future plans are. As we sit here today, we have 340 stores in the United States. And we're going to be opening about 92 stores this year. So 340 stores, 92 stores this year. But by the year 1988, ending in January of 1999, uh, this company is going to have about 825 stores. Are you talking about a tremendous growth? This is over 500 stores in a very short period of time, four years to be exact. And uh, today we have 70,000 employees. At that point, we'll have about 150,000 employees. So, we, and, and we're moving into the Midwest. We're filling in stores up in the Northwest, the Southeast, the West Coast. Uh, and this is all without any growth outside the borders of the United States, except for Canada, where we presently own a company, Home Depot in Canada. Uh, and uh, that is growing now. We have 12 stores. We're going to have 50 stores by the year 2000 in the Canadian. 
We're also talking about going into Mexico now, and that's going to be our first venture into South America. And there'll probably be some other ventures that we're going to make in other parts of the world. Uh, the, the, the thing that we have at the Home Depot, all of the same principles that we talked about before, uh, the principle of assortment, the principle of quality merchandise, priced across the board, having quality people on the floor taking care of you, is something that the world needs. You need it in Europe, and you need it in the Middle East, and the Far East, and just about everywhere in the world. The key is how many places can we open? How far can we go? Uh, how good are we uh, in operating outside the borders of the United States? And those are all things we're going to fool around with in the next five years. Uh, certainly, we're going to put a finger here and a foot there and try all these businesses out. Uh, we're not great gamblers. Uh, we are entrepreneurs, but we're not stupid, and we don't ever get up to the table and bet everything that we have. Uh, it, we think it'll work everywhere in the world. Uh, it's, it really is up to the country that we go to. The customs may be dis different. Uh, we need to have a large middle class group of people. We need to have people that want to buy products so that we can teach how to do it yourself. Developing nations are great for a company like the Home Depot. So I mean, there's great opportunity in the world for us. And we are, in fact, going to be spreading uh, in the next 10 to 15 to 20 years, you'll see the Home Depot uh, all over the world. Stores here, stores there, stores here. Very interesting thing. And we're doing it in a very studied way. We're not just running and uh, uh, just getting off the handle and just going wherever, wherever is an opportunity. There is an opportunity everywhere. But I must tell you that the greatest opportunity for us is the United States and will be for the next 20 years. Bernie, as you know, our program is targeting the Jewish community of the United States. Are you planning on opening stores in Israel? I, I think they'd like us to open stores in Israel, but no, we're not, we're not going to be opening stores in Israel. Uh, it's a little bit too far. We're still worried about Mexico, which is not that far. But uh, it, it hasn't really stopped our involvement with Israel. Uh, I'm very much involved with Israel myself personally. Uh, both through the Federation and through a uh, think tank that I've set up in Israel called the Israel Democracy Institute, where we are um, trying uh, uh, desperately to uh, help them privatize and, and change the, the form of government so that it's a more unique and democratic form of government. And we've been very successful so far. But while I was there, uh, about four years ago, they asked me to give a speech to Israeli manufacturers, and I did. I went out and I spoke to these 300 Israeli manufacturers, and I told them the story of how difficult it was for the Home Depot to buy a product manufactured in Israel. Here we have a country that has uh, labor, it has intelligence, uh, they're able to import merchandise, from uh, uh, raw goods from all over the world, and yet we couldn't buy any product because whenever I would talk to the Israeli manufacturer, they would say, you have to buy from us because you're a Jew and you have to support Israel. Well, ours is a public company, and we don't, we don't, my private endeavor has nothing to do with our business. If we, if it's a good product, made properly, it's priced right, it's, and it's delivered on time, uh, we're going to buy it. Otherwise, we're not going to buy it, and uh, it's easier for me to raise my, my contribution to Federation than have to punish my company, which I wouldn't do under any circumstances. Well, uh, I challenged them, and I told them that their attitude was terrible, and that they felt that this was a charity deal, and business is business, and there was no way that they could not be, and should not be, the Hong Kong of the Middle East. I mean, you think about it. Why aren't they the Hong Kong of the Middle East? And I'll be a son of a gun, but what happened is that they took my challenge, and several manufacturers came to me afterwards and said, we will produce products at a better price, better quality than what you buy today in Korea, Taiwan, anywhere else. And I, we, we went through the challenge. I said, fine, if you can do that, I will introduce you to our people and we will buy merchandise. Well, it really got off the ground about two years ago. And I want to tell you, this year, we are bringing in over $30 million of product from Israel. Every one of these products, price right, high quality merchandise, uh, something that uh, is, is competitive with the world's products. And they have demonstrated that they can do it. And we're looking for one day to be bringing in $100 million worth of merchandise. Now, you have to understand, it's a small country, this country of 5 million people. So we talk about doing $30 million, and we talk about doing $100 million. This is a major endeavor. They are now in businesses that they've never been in before, and they're selling it out throughout the world. They're not only selling it to us, they're selling it to other companies in the United States. They're selling it to Europe. They're now selling it to the Far East. It's amazing of what has happened out of the Home Depot. So 
What we, what the challenge that we gave them then has come to pass, and we are very, very, and our people love their products. They are, they react when they ask for a sample. The sample is there. If there's a problem with shipping, it it just is turned totally different than what it was four years ago. It's amazing to what they have done in that short period of time. Bernie, I'm very curious. What are these Israeli products? If you look in our store, you'll see some products made by Keter. Uh, chairs, plastic, uh, made out of polyethylene chairs, uh, at a great price. Phenomenal product. Uh, Keter also makes uh, shelving for us. Uh, and you look at something called Zog. Zog, and you look at the products, you look for the name, it says Zog Industries. Uh, there are all kinds of toolboxes and step stools and basically products made out of plastic. In addition to that, there's one Hamat, it's a, uh, a faucet. Uh, they're levelers by Capro. So we have about 15 manufacturers that, we're making mer that, that are making merchandise for us. And by the way, it's expanding. It's expanding every single year. More and more manufacturers who are making products for us. And by the way, this has opened up the world to them. So because once you sell to the Home Depot, uh, everybody says, well, you sell to the Home Depot. I'm interested in looking at that product. It's like a door opener for them. So I believe, I believe that out of this business that we have started, I really started with some courageous manufacturers that we have, you know, that are, that are selling to us, uh, has developed a whole business that never existed before in Israel. And this is what creates jobs. This is what creates a better environment. This is where the economic health will help the Israelis more than money going through Federation and money coming out of the U.S. government. Bernie, this is most interesting. I'd like us to pause and come back after these commercial messages. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. You can connect the wires now. Ow! Why be in the dark? The Brother P-Touch electronic labeling system. It tells you what's what. I've got those receipts here somewhere. You know, I'm a big fan of you people in the IRS. Make life less taxing. The Brother P-Touch electronic labeling system. It tells you what's what. Hello, my name is Mark Brower. I'm a board certified marital and family lawyer and a fellow of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers. I give my clients the benefit of my 25 years of experience in the field. My offices are conveniently located in West Fort Lauderdale. If you are involved in a complex marital matter, whether it be dissolution of marriage, custody, visitation, support, or premarital agreements, feel free to give me a call for an appointment. Afraid of classical music? Do orchestras make your blood run cold? Then you haven't heard the Florida Philharmonic. The atmosphere's friendly, the music's fantastic, the performers first rate. And season tickets start at just $36. So be a fabulous Florida Philharmonic fan by calling 930-1812. There's nothing to fear. Why are the Home Depot's prices so great? We have everyday low prices, every day of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Rock bottom pricing every day. Guaranteed. You never had to wait for a sale. We check to make sure that we are the low price. If you find it somewhere else, we're going to meet and beat their price. Every day at the Home Depot is a sale day. There's no reason to go to all these different stores and run around for hours looking for the, you know, trying to price things out. The Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Come on board the world-famous Jungle Queen barbecue and shrimp dinner cruise, a tradition for over 45 years. Cruise to a tropical island on the New River for an all-you-can-eat dinner of ribs, chicken, steamed shrimp with all the trimmings, and followed by an hilarious vaudeville show. Then a fun-filled sing-along in the return trip. Don't miss it. It's a must in Fort Lauderdale. There's nothing like it. So come on board the Jungle Queen, 7 p.m. nightly. Also, daily sightseeing cruises, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're back with Mr. Bernie Marcus, Chairman of the Home Depot. Bernie, you mentioned earlier the Think Tank and IDI. Tell our viewers a little more about this. Okay. The, um, 
the IBI began, uh, I guess, about three years ago, three and a half years ago. And it really started with the who is a Jew issue, uh, where lots of uh, people in the United States were kind of offended by the fact that uh, there was a, uh, a limiting on who was going to be qualified as a Jew in Israel and qualified for citizenship in, in Israel. And uh, we got a little upset by it. I got a little upset by it and uh, decided to investigate why this could happen and uh, began to look at the, uh, the basis of their government. You have to understand Israel is a, is a new country. You know, you look around the world and you see uh, England and the Netherlands and Germany. These are old countries that have had a tradition of, 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 uh, of government. And Israel has not had a tradition of government and has a parliamentary system uh, which really grew around Ben-Gurion and was kind of put into place uh, as it was put into place and then grew without having a formal and a real architectural growth to it where, where it was set up. You know, the founding fathers of the United States sat down, they had a Bill of Rights, they had a Constitution, and they kind of specified what was going to happen with all those things. In Israel, it didn't happen. By the way, there's no Bill of Rights and no Constitution in Israel today. So right now, the, the power of the Knesset, the power of the Prime Minister, the power of the Supreme Court, all of those things are really up for grabs. And, and there's no breakdown on who has what control up to what point. The IDI was set up by a group of Israelis. Uh, all we do here in the United States is facilitate what happens there. There are some Israelis, uh, including memory, many members of the Knesset, uh, both from Likud and Labor, uh, people uh, who are very, very uh, uh, much involved with Israel who have decided that they want to reform the system, that they want to make a better working government because they feel that, again, economic growth, economic growth will spell future opportunities for Israel. Putting people to work is really what they want and they can't live off the United States anymore because we see in this administration today and future administrations that foreign aid is going to slow down somewhere and they're not going to have the same thing. So they, they have to, to learn to stand by themselves. Uh, it's very difficult in a socialistic society. In Israel, is a socialistic society. Slowly but surely, it's turning. Where privatization is con beginning to crawl into each one. The IDI is a think tank that was brought up to be the tool for the members of the Knesset. They have no such thing. When they want information, they have no way of getting information. We are setting up in Israel a. Uh, an organization we, we're not setting up, it's already in place, and we have done many things in the Knesset. We have uh, been involved with the way they do their budgeting for the entire government of Israel. We've already changed the way they do their budgeting. Uh, it, we have, uh, if you look at the way the parties are being picked in the primaries, we've been involved with the primaries for almost every single party uh, out there. Likud, Labor, Meretz, the, the, uh, the Shahs, we have, uh, we have been the ones that drew up uh, the prime, their primaries for their picking of the candidates for running for uh, both the party and also for the prime minister. Uh, we're very much involved with, with the political reform system right now. Uh, as we speak, in 1996, there's a direct election of the prime minister. Well, that election right now has ne needs an awful lot of work. It was done, but it was done haphazard haphazardly and really did not have the safeguards that they have to have. So we're involved with all the strategies that are going on there, plus about 15 or 20 other prices, things that we're doing. It might interest you to know that um, I'm chairman of the American Friends of IDI, which is really the support group. We don't, we don't develop the programs. Remember, all of the programs are developed in Israel, uh, and my, the vice chairman, uh, my honorary vice chairman, is George Schultz who is the ex-Secretary of State, who is a great supporter of Israel. This is the only endeavor that he has lent his name to, and he works at it. He's, he's constantly involved with us. Uh, he's been to Israel. He's, in fact, he's going to be there in July with us uh, when we dedicate our new building and our new round table where we're going to have all of these debates taking place. Uh, we are setting up in Israel an up-to-date, absolutely the most uh, uh, sophisticated um, uh, video conferencing center in Israel where uh, up to now we have flown people in from all over the world. We've flown, flown people in from the Netherlands, Germany, Italy, everywhere. When we want to pass a law, help them pass a law, uh, rather than re redo the wheel and rather starting from scratch, uh, we bring people in from everywhere. We've had them from Sweden, Australia, New Zealand, 
Uh, it's very expensive bringing them in. It's very time consuming. There's a, there's a problem with scheduling. With a video conferencing, all we have to do is give them a week's notice and they're on with us and they're sitting with the members of the Knesset and the members of the Knesset saying, oh, we want to pass a law on reform, on electoral reform, on campaign financing, and we will have six people all over the world involved with that discussion, talking about campaign financing in England, in the UK, in Germany, in all of those places where it works, so that the Israelis don't have to reinvent the wheel. In addition to that, we have a computer system where every law that's passed in every parliamentary system in the world is now on our computer, so the Israelis can pick up now, the members of Knesset can literally pick up every law that's been picked up and again, have a very good idea on how to structure a law. So I think that, and this is, this is something that we've been out of limelight. Nobody knows we exist. It's supported by a very small group of people, people who intellectually understand what we're doing. We don't build big buildings. We don't put plaques up. You know, the typical thing that happens in Israel. What we're doing is very, very effective and having an absolute, an absolute effect on what's going to happen in the future there because we believe that, that if, in fact, there's a growth of capitalism and free enterprise in Israel and jobs are created, that that will spread throughout the Middle East because eventually the Palestinians will be able to support themselves as well because the Israelis will be so industrious that maybe these people will stop thinking about violence and begin thinking about feeding their families. Bernie, that really is most commendable and absolutely fascinating. But I'd like to change subjects and ask you, uh, to tell our views of some of the other endeavors you're involved with, other than IDI and, of course, the success of Home Depot. You know, one of the things that uh, nobody knows about Home Depot, which I think is very interesting, which you might find, your, your, all of your viewers might find very interesting. I'll tell you a story. Do you have a minute for a story? I'll give you have a, have a minute. I, I received a letter recently from somebody up in New Milford, in, um, uh, uh, New Milford uh, Connecticut. And they wrote me a story, North Haven, I'm sorry, it was North Haven, Connecticut. And they wrote me a story and they said to me, uh, in the letter, they said, number one, they buy in our store all the time, uh, that they're shareholders in the company. You know, we're a New York Stock Exchange company, you don't mind if I give it a little plug, do you? Uh, we're on a New York Stock Exchange. Uh, and uh, that they'd always loved the stores, but now they will never, ever shop anywhere else, based on the story that was in the paper, the New Haven paper that day. And it talked about a little old woman who was captive of her own house. She lived up on a second floor, uh, not a, but a high porch, and she was in a wheelchair. And she rarely got out of the house. Every six weeks or so, somebody would carry her down in a wheelchair and take her somewhere shopping, just take her to play. And she was a captive. Uh, she had very little family, uh, very, very few friends, or certainly no friends who were young enough to carry down this wheelchair. One day, she showed up in our store. And in the store, she happened to be speaking to one of our people, 21-year-old man, young kid in the, in the lumber department. And she was explaining the story. And she said, I have $75 to buy lumber, and I'm going to build a ramp to my house. Well, he looked at this thing, and he just asked her questions, and he knew $75 was not going to build a ramp. There was no way she could do it. So he went out and got his manager, and the manager came back and heard the story of this poor woman who was a captive in her house. And they went back to her house, and they looked at it. And what happened is that for the next four weeks, 25 to 30 of our employees on their time, not our time, went out and built her a ramp. Built a ramp. And not only that, they repaired the porch. They went in the house. She needed repairs all over the house. And they made it a major project. They were learning on the job while they were doing all these projects. And they were doing something for somebody. The people in the area are doing something for their community that's unique and unusual. And it's much more important than anything I do personally in my own personal life. Obviously, I'm involved with things. Uh, Arthur Blank, who's president of the company, he has his, per his personal projects that we're involved with. But the thing that we're most proud of with the Home Depot is what we have done in the area of charity throughout the United States. The people in the area are doing something for their community that's unique and unusual. And it's much more important than anything I do personally in my own personal life. Obviously, I'm involved with things. Uh, Arthur Blank, who's president of the company, he has his, per his personal projects that we're involved with. But the thing that we're most proud of with the Home Depot is what we have done in the area of charity throughout the United States. Bernie, that was a wonderful story, and it's been a very, very great pleasure to have you on the Shalom Show. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back. the home
Home Depot's prices so great? We have everyday low prices every day of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Rock bottom pricing every day. Guaranteed. You never had to wait for a sale. We check to make sure that we are the low price. If you find it somewhere else, we're going to meet and beat their price. Every day at the Home Depot is a sale day. There's no reason to go to all these different stores and run around for hours looking for the, you know, trying to price things out. The Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Since 1979, The Shalom Show is working hard to increase public understanding, friendship and support for Israel with a view to peaceful solutions for all concerned. Isn't this a cause you personally should participate in? We are expanding to reach even more viewers and we need your help at this time. Please support this essential cause by becoming a member of The Shalom Show today. Please send your tax-deductible donation to The Shalom Foundation. P.O. Box 030464, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33301. Thank you and Shalom.